Welcome, test subject. It's Cave Prime from Earth One. I am speaking to you from across time and space. I am literally in the future. I hold on. What? All right. My assistant Greg tells me none of that's true. Got excited. You are the first test subject we have ever sent into a parallel universe, which apparently has nothing to do with time travel. Still exciting. Anyway, you should be seeing a test chamber in front of you. We designed it. Those backwater universe yokels built it, and you're going to test it. Remember, you got to let us know if it works or not. Otherwise, you're wasting everybody's time on two Earths. All right, get to it. Cave here. Just so you know, this mic isn't two way. I can't hear a damn thing you're saying, so don't waste any oxygen trying to talk. Right. What? <laughs> ah, my assistant Greg says some of these alternate Earths may not have oxygen. The air might be nitrogen or methane or hell, everybody's head might be inside out. So just take little itty bitty breaths. And if anybody asks you why your head's inside out, remember it's only inside out from their perspective, and you're fine. Head wise, trouble wise, you're in a lot of it, and you should probably run. All right, enough hypotheticals. Let's test this test. Cave here, man. Oh man, wow. Greg's multiple universe theory was dicey, but you're pulling through with flying colors. We're all very proud of Greg. Oh, and you. Before we start testing today, let's have our mandatory minute of silence in honor of Earth's governing body, the sentient cloud. <clears throat> Starting now. <coughs> Good, right. All hail the sentient cloud. Begin testing. I've just been notified that one of our test subjects may have angered the sentient cloud by beginning testing early. Now, as you all know, the cloud has banned all camera technology. Hates getting its picture taken. So this will have to be on the honor system. Will whoever started testing early please go outside so they can be consumed by the cloud? Just a heads up that the cloud's still waiting. I don't think that thing's going to go away. So somebody might want to get out there. No, no! It came in under the door. It's leaching off all my skin. Ah! Excerpt there from one of our safety videos. Grizzly stuff, very informative. Somebody doesn't get out there soon, we're going to have to do a lottery because believe me, if we keep that cloud waiting much longer, he's coming in under the doors and he will leech off all our skin. Cave here, the real cave. Greg's been crunching some numbers here on Earth Prime. Turns out the likelihood of me being the only cave who likes talking to test subjects is. What's the actual number, Greg?、Mm -hmm. Right, zero. So tell you what, we're going to use a code word. If I say chariots, it means you're listening to me. Otherwise, it's an imposter cave. I want you to know you have a license to kill on this one. What?、Uh, Greg says that might destroy the entire multiverse. Point is, use your own judgment. License to kill. Welcome, gentlemen, to Aperture Rituals. Astronauts, war heroes, Olympians. You're here because of an ancient mating ritual etched in a monolith by the elder monks to forestall the end of days. So, who is ready to make love to a giant bird? Cave Johnson here. Just want to let the cafeteria staff know to lay off the Soylent Green. I'm holding a memo from the president, and it turns out that Soylent Green is, let's see here, doubling in price. Now, listen up. I don't care how good people tastes. This stuff's costing me more than lobster. So we're going back to fish sticks. And peel it. Attitude and done. Hey, it's Cave. Someone's not dancing. Come on, you know the law. Testing is not a dance exemption. Don't make me call the dance police. Test subject. Can you hear me? Congratulations. You were the world's first half man, half machine police officer. Well, first batch. There was a pretty big shootout. Bought all your carcasses off the mayor. Anyway, you should be proud to be a part of Aperture's Android Law Enforcement Initiative. Or as someone who's good at naming things, i.e., me, would call it Robo. No, Robota Cop. Oh, that's much better. Now, before we get you solving crimes, we got to get you to solve this test. Promised the mayor I'd make sure you weren't all unstable potato heads before I gave you all guns. Come in, Robota Cop. It's your chief. First, you're a damn good cop. Second, you're a loose cannon. All right, that's probably enough motivation. Oh, before I forget, Greg tells me you might be getting some tragic flashbacks of your former life. Don't sweat it; those aren't yours. Due to a software problem, that's a real-time feed of Greg's current life. He's a sad little man. Anyway, just try to ignore him. Cave here. Chariots. Just a heads up. If it seems like you're walking faster than light, you're probably in a universe where light doesn't haul nearly as much ass as it does on Earth One. The lab boys say if you insist on walking faster than light, you are 100% going to go back in time. How far? Far enough to meet your great-great-grandfather and tell him you're fired. Because guess what? 
I'll let you finish that thought. Welcome, test prisoner, to the Terra-3 penal science colony. Space criminals, political prisoners, exiled planetary leaders, you're here because the galaxy needed a place to put you, and this is it. So, who is ready to stay here until they die? Now, you already met one another on the hyperdrive over, so let me introduce myself. I'm Cave Johnson. I'm the warden around here. Attention test prisoners attempting to escape through the air ducts. I don't know what nonsense you learned on TV, but in real life, air ducts just go to the air conditioning unit. It's also pretty dusty, so if you've got asthma, chances are you're going to die up there. And we'll be smelling it for weeks because, again, the air ducts aren't a secret escape hatch. They're how we ventilate the facility. (laughs) This thing on? I'm going to be brief because I'm dying. Because I got shivved. A lot. I just want to get it on record that using force fields for doors in a space prison is a bad idea. You know what would have been better? Regular doors with locks. Locks that don't open when the power goes out. (coughs) Man, those blue force fields looked good, though. Every time I saw one, I thought, wow, I am in space. Still, though, a door made out of paper would have been better in the long run. Would have at least slowed them down for a second. Anyway, anybody not escaping or shiving me, get back to work. Those of you who volunteered to be injected with homo sapien DNA have got some good news and some bad news. Bad news is we're postponing those tests indefinitely. Good news is we've got a much better test for you. Fighting an army of mad mantises. Pick up a set of four-leg spurs, mesothorax armor, and tubercle sheets. You'll know when the test starts. It's come to my attention that over half of our test subjects have only recently awoken from extended relaxation and were unaware that we're testing in space. So, there it is. No conspiracy, no twist. We're in a test satellite orbiting the Earth. Commonly available information that absolutely anyone would have told you if you'd bothered to ask. Please stop forming groups of adventuring parties to uncover the big secret because it's that we're in space. Well, looks like we just had to seal up Science Sphere 7, Hull Breach. Another adventure party smashed through the hull to learn the big mystery. Guess they were busy doing that instead of testing because I've mentioned that we're in space every half hour. By the way, still in space. And another hull breach. Let's all give a big hand to the test subjects of Sphere 18 for bravely uncovering the company-wide conspiracy, which is that there's no air in space. Once again, we're in space. It's not a secret. I am sincerely regretting my decision not to install windows in this thing. (sighs) Welcome, gentlemen, to the Aperture Hollow Science Jungle. Tramps, hillbillies, drifters, you're here because you followed the hobo signs. So... Who is ready to scrounge around for some science? Now, you already met one another on the boxcar over here, so grab a bowl of Slum Gullion and a glass of Sterno and let me introduce myself. I'm Michigan Slim Cave Johnson. I'm the Hobo King. It's Cave. Greg's telling me the number of possible alternate universes is literally infinite. Maybe there's one where, I don't know, the Greeks won World War II. Just a heads up in case you get to a test chamber and find yourself surrounded by urns. Oh, chariots. That shrieking voice you just heard is the lovely Blarkbarg, my assistant. She's the backbone of this facility. Sorry, fellas, she's married to producing seeds that germinate and detach from her exoskeleton at high speeds in search of human hosts. We keep her behind glass. Hello, test subjects. Good news first. Our telekinesis incubation program has been a huge success. Bad news, the candidate screening process was a lot less successful. Let me tell you, we picked a real bunch of smart Alex to give mind powers to. Hey, stop blowing up heads. Actually, you know what? Negotiation's over. I'd like you all to meet Terry. He's gonna blow you up. Oh, real funny, guys. But the joke's on you. I taped all your paychecks to Terry's head. Ha! Why don't you put that in your head and blow it up? That's right, everybody. It's that time of year again. Happy birthday! You know the rules. Everybody at the government-mandated maximum age needs to report to an ethnological redundancy associate toot sweet. Looking through the files here, the following is a complete list of employees who need to snuff it. <clears throat> Dorothy Russell, age 98. End of list. Sorry about that, Dorothy. You had a good 97 years. Time to stop hogging all the resources. Leave some nutrient paste for the rest of us, why don't you? Cave Johnson, age 51. We're done here. Cave Johnson, junior claims representative for Aperture Science here. Well, former junior claims representative. Just found out I got laid off. Well, I'll just sneak into their recording office and let everybody know our president, that creep Doug Ratman, is embezzling funds. 
Enjoy your Christmas bonuses knowing he took most of them, jerks. Cave Johnson here. The Mattis men have officially taken over the building. If you can get out, get out now. They're... Oh, God, they're breaking through the barricades. Cave Johnson here. I see you. I see your little feet. I'm going to cut off your hair and put it on your feet and eat your little hair. What? Oh, and feet. Mm. Hi down there. We're going to test forever and ever and ever. Hey, hey. Uh-oh. Hey, what are you doing in here? Beat it. Come on, Greg, I told you not to let your creepy kid in my office. No, no, I'm sorry, Greg, but there is something wrong with that kid. We'll test forever. Why she whisper all the time? Hey, test subject, just keep going. Chariots, chariots. Man, that kid's creepy. Chariots, Cave Johnson here reminding you to fill out the paperwork for full payment once you're done testing. The check may seem exorbitant, but you deserve it. Chariots, chariots, it's Cave Johnson. If you get through this next room, you'll get a bonus. And that's on top of the bonus I gave you this morning. <laughs> Don't thank me, because you're the real boss. Why? Because you teach me something new every day. Chariots, you test subjects are the best. Oh my gosh, chariots. This is Cave, Prime. So, apparently there's an alternate dimension Cave Johnson who just uses the word chariots for no reason. From now on, I'll say chariots twice if it's me. If you hear just one chariot, that's an alternate cave. Okay? Chariot, chariot. Hello, test subject. Cave Johnson here, founder and CEO of Aperture Science, the best damn applied sciences company on Earth. How good is the science here? Get a load of this. I'm dead. Now, you're probably asking yourself, Cave, how is that possible? Are you some manner of Dracula or a Frankenstein? Or, depending on your cultural heritage, a Blackula or a Latin Frankenstein? <laughs> nope, just science. As of this morning, I have been resurrected inside of a computer. That aside, situation normal. So, continue testing. Just a warning to you test subjects. Greg and the boys told me that the massive influx of information I'd receive when they transferred my consciousness into a stadium-sized supercomputer would turn me crazy. So, once again, a warning. Greg and the boys are no longer working here, so if they were doing something for you, that's not getting done. Cave again. Now, I'll admit losing my body does have its drawbacks, but it's got its perks, too. As a being of pure intellect, I've now got time to read the entire literary canon of the human race. Here I go. And I am done. <sighs> Continue testing. Pure Intellect Cave here. Not to brag, but while you were cat-assing that last test, I rewrote the collected works of everything ever. If i got to read this garbage for eternity, I might as well improve it. So next time you curl up with a time-honored classic and think to yourself, man, I do not remember the Brothers Karamazov busting so many ghosts. You can thank yours truly. Here's a question for you. Who is not afraid of no ghosts? As of just now, every character in every book by Virginia Woolf. Man, those things were dull. Cave again. What is the one thing that could never, ever, ever, ever in a million years get boring? If you said busting ghosts, tragically, you'd be wrong. It was almost all the way through the W's when the bloom came off that rose. Heathcliff was defending moon-based weathering heights from the crafty poltergeist when I realized exploring the vast realm of pure intellect is boring. It's boring. You know what I'd really like to do? I'd like to scratch my nose. I've been thinking, what if Greg was right? What if injecting my consciousness into a computer robbed me of an eternal reward, spiritually speaking. All right, I just read up on it. Stumbled on a book about a fellow who lived thousands of years ago, sacrificed himself to save mankind. Went by the name of Hercules. Destroyed all the world's monsters so humans would be safe, and went to Olympus for his trouble. Damn it! Death was my monster, and I killed it. Where's my Olympus? Unless Aperture was the monster. Aperture and everybody inside it. Holy Hercules! I just thought of something. Keep testing, or don't. Doesn't matter. I'll be back. Whoa! Chariots, chariots. For some reason, some of the audio was bleeding through in this universe. Don't know if you were catching the subtext there, but that computer cave is crazy. So, Greg was right. As of now, we are canceling the Genetic Life Form and Disc Operating System Initiative. Boy, that could have backfired. Anyway, this Earth is far too dangerous, and we are pulling you out. Right after this test. Welcome, gentlemen, to Aperture Paranormal. Magicians, witches, crystal healing doctors, you're here because you have scary powers and we want in on it. So, who is ready to draw some pentagrams? Now, you already met one another on the cab ride over, so let me introduce myself. I'm Cave Johnson. 
I'm host to a tiny but powerful demon who lives in a secret place in my mouth. Cave Johnson again, just a heads up. You are currently in a tiny test chamber floating around in my bloodstream. Remember, if you see a giant set of car keys, those are mine. Lab boys shrunk them partway down before I could stop them. No idea if it was for science or if they were just having one on an old cave, but either way, if you don't find those things pretty soon, I'm going to have to call AAA. Hello, test subject. As you are no doubt aware, the president is being held hostage inside the giant super prison on the floor of the Atlantic Ocean. Every science facility in America has been tasked with producing a tough guy capable of breaking into Super Max Lantis. That's where you come in. I'm nominating myself, and I'm going to need some references. A test associate should be around soon to get a quote off you, so be as glowing as possible. Quick update on all those pods we were finding in broom closets. Apparently some alien monster was body-snatching employees and spawning communist replicas. The allegorical threat level on this one's through the roof. Actual threat level's pretty non-existent, though, so we've decided not to do anything about it. If the worst this thing can do is just eight glassy-eyed yes man, I say bring it on, bug eyes. I got a whole list of troublemakers you can pot up anytime you like. Meow. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. Cave Johnson, new owner and CEO of Black Mesa. That's right, you've been bought. First order of business, we're renaming you under the Aperture brand. I'm leaning towards Blapature Mesa. Marketing boys think something else. So, Blapature it is. Next, they tell me you people are conducting some anomalous materials research that could result in a resonance cascade. So, I'm shutting that down before you idiots end the world. A resonance cascade. You're supposed to be scientists. Use some common sense. <laughs> Cave Johnson here. Just wanted to let you know that after decades of research and testing, we have finally transformed into beings of pure light. Go team. Not exactly what we were after, of course, but in the ballpark. So, let's keep testing and maybe someday we'll achieve man's ultimate dream to evolve into pillars of pure salt. Can't wait. So salty. Chariot, chariot. By the way, you can make a bit of a mess in these rooms if you want. Scuff your shoes or stick gum on the walls because these alternate Cave Johnsons are really cheesing me off. Cave Johnson again, just a heads up, we've got an interverse security breach in one of the test areas. You all enjoyed a good chuckle at Cave's expense when I started monitoring for parallel universe invasions. You all tried to stop me when I tried to garnish your wages to build defenses against said invasion. Succeeded, too. So, I hope you're happy. We've got a bogey from Earth-1 loose on the premises. Go write a letter to the Better Business Bureau about that, why don't you? Actually, don't. Would anyone like to know what the invaders from Earth-1 are up to inside our facility? I don't blame you. Bet it'd be fascinating stuff. But we don't have any multiverse invasion monitoring equipment. Asked for it, told it was stupid. Anyway, I hope these monsters replace our air with chlorine. Finally give you crybaby something to cry about. Just a quick update on the attack of the killer ants. Apparently they tried to commandeer the entirety of our nation's sugar reserves in Kentucky. Big firefight at Fort Sugar Knox. Edge of your seat stuff. Anyway... That's as far as I made it through the movie before I fell asleep. So, if anybody's seen Attack of the Killer Ants, don't spoil the ending or you're fired. By the way, chariot, chariot. <coughs> Hi, Mr. Timmy. Doc says I ain't gonna pull through. But if you could just finish this test, I bet we could lick this thing. <coughs> Kavina Johnson here. It's come to my attention that one of you has sent a letter to the Supreme Council of Matriarchs accusing me of being a man. So, I want to assure both you and the Gender Regulatory Committee that I am indeed 100% all woman. And if you don't believe me, I swear to God, I will beat you. What? Greg, t what? Sally Sue Greg tells me that we will all exchange handmade sympathy cards discussing how we feel about the issue. All right, let's do some lady science. I sincerely hope you're not allergic to air. Our peanut dust ventilator broke in this wing, so the atmosphere is only 60% peanut dust. Hey, it's me, the real me. Uh, chariots, chariots. Anyway... It appears the test chambers in our dimension are being tested on. Looks like another alternate universe Cave Johnson is using the same trick I am. If you see that one, will you punch him in the throat for me? But make sure it's him and not me, or you're fired. Chariots, chariots, we have a problem. That alternate Cave Johnson is using all our test chambers now. We have to take care of things here for a while, so you're on your own. Try to remember the test so we can write it all down later. Aha! We got you, you... Wait, is that the real you from our dimension? Ah, chariots, chariots, it's cave. Seriously, of all the infinite alternate dimensions, you happen to wind up randomly in ours again? Okay, just get through this test and be very careful not to mess anything up. Hey, chariots, chariots, just thought you should know, that sick boy from a couple of Earths ago, we kept monitoring that because, man, that was riveting. Anyway, he didn't make it. Good try, though. We were virtually all pulling for him. Chariots, chariots, damn it! Now we've got two testers here from another damn Earth. 
We had one of them cornered, then the other one just portaled him out of there, then they high-fived and went their separate ways. I'm going to need you to test double-quick to make sure we're messing them up as badly as they're messing us up here. Attention, chariots, chariots. There are at least six extra-dimensional testers here now. And to be honest, they're not even really testing anymore. They just all portaled in, made a human pyramid, ate my lunch, and portaled out. Chariots, chariots, look, it's me. Apparently, this other Earth has portal guns that can make portals on anything. We've had guys just walking along, and suddenly a portal opens beneath them, and they fall out of a wall. I'm thinking maybe we should just work out a truce. I'll let you know if we can get in touch with this evil Cave Johnson. Chariots, chariots. Okay. Greg managed to contact the Cave Johnson, who keeps sending testers here, and we've agreed. No more testing in each other's dimensions. We'll get you back here ASAP. Hello, test subject. Just a heads up that our research into stopping all the Godzilla attacks on U.S. soil has been postponed indefinitely. Turns out it doesn't matter where you hatch a nest full of Godzillas, they just make a beeline straight for Tokyo. <laughs> Should have seen those things go. Anyway, crisis averted. Now, everybody grab a dustpan and a broom. we got to get rid of all these eggshells before the Nuclear Regulatory Commission shows up. Break one nine, big box cave Johnson here, hauling a freight shaker with a load of cold ones in the wagon down to Texarkana. Got 28 hours to get this done, so I'm putting the hammer down. Anybody here in this, shake the bushes and give me your 1020. Also, test subjects, I'll be gone for 28 hours, test on your own recognizance. I want to keep this channel clear, so do not use your CB radios. Cave Johnson, we're over and out here. Chariots, chariots, whoever this alternate Cave Johnson is, he's a jerk. Instead of sending us the apology fruit assortment he promised, he just sent a whole bunch of angry wasps. We'll find a way to get back at him, don't you worry. You keep testing, and don't be afraid to get messy with it. We'll just see who wins this deadly game of cat and other cat. Chariots, chariots. Okay, now the other cave has sent a huge block of frozen urine. It's too big for us to get it out of the multiverse device, so we just have to let it melt until we can wedge it out. Incidentally, if you come across a dimension where people eat nothing but asparagus, I'm guessing that's where our nemesis is, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Cave Johnson here. I need you to... Do not listen to this man. He's the other Cave Johnson. He's an imposter. You're the imposter, imposter. Chariots, chariots. Oh, yeah? Chariots, chariots, chariots. Just keep testing. I'll settle this. No, I'll settle this. Shut it, you. And you, keep testing. All right. I think we shut down the imposter caves calmly. You'd like to think that, wouldn't you? Damn it! Stop imposting! Never! Oh, you stubborn, handsome devil. It's come to my attention that there's a pair of sunglasses floating around this place that lets you see the subliminal propaganda we've painstakingly hidden on every visible surface. Look, people, the reason motivational propaganda works is because you're not staring straight at it. That's the whole point. But what do I know? If everybody's too cool to be subliminally propagandized, feel free to wear your magic sunglasses all damn day. Motivate yourselves from now on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, Dark Cave, you are the only one around here who gets me. I tell you, I haven't had a conversation this damn good since... Hold on. I gotta talk to the help. Hey, you, chariots, chariots, keep testing. Hey, Dark Cave. Cave Prime, as I live and breathe methane. Listen, do you have a Greg in your universe? You want one? <laughs> Greg, come back. I wouldn't send you to Dark Cave Earth. I would. Greg is on the table. Cave Johnson here, just a reminder that the core goal of Aperture Gas Finding Science is to find gas. So make sure you let us know if you see any. If we meet our quarterly gas finding target, I promise you we will don our bondage gear, fuel our death cars, and drive around in circles, whooping it up and shooting arrows at people. Who is ready to rule the wasteland? All right, start looking. Hello, test subject. Echo, echo. Welcome to your first test. I'm your overseer, Cave Johnson. And I think if you keep testing, you might find something very interesting about this planet. <laughs> it's me. I'm the planet. You live on me. I wanted to save it for later, but man, it's just it's too darn good. You really wouldn't have seen it coming. Do me a favor. Don't tell any of the other test subjects. Also, don't pollute. Chariots, chariots. According to Greg, theoretically, there's an Earth out there made entirely of money. Plus, since there's an infinite number of Earths, that means there's an infinite number of money planets. So, I've done the math, and I figure the odds of finding this thing are 100%. Not now, Greg. That doesn't mean I want you to stop testing. But do keep an eye out for the money-verse. And let me be clear, I'm talking about U.S. currency. You find a peso-verse, you just keep walking. Chariots, chariots, chariots. Dark cave here, listen. You find the money-verse, you bring it to me. I'll take care of you. You want to be promoted to head of testing? Done. You want your asparagus rations doubled? I'll pull some strings. You want all the methane you can breathe? Not a problem. Remember, moneyverse, dark cave, asparagus, lots of it. Enough said. Chariots, chariots. 
Cave Prime here. I hear you've been brokering a deal with that other cave. So here's what I want you to do. Find your alternate self, steal his stuff, put it in a box, and if there's a parking lot, walk the box out to it, because you're fired. Chariots, chariots. Cave Johnson here. All right, Greg's informed me this is not the best time to fire you. But if you are talking to that other cave, let me just remind you who you work for. Chariots, chariots, chariots. And let me remind you who's offering methane. Chariots, chariots. Look, whatever he's offering, I'll double it. Greg, how are we fix for methane? Huh? Huh? Well, what do we use it all for? Evil cave again. I think your choice is clear here. Test subject. Not clear. Not clear. Keep testing. Cave Prime here. Dark Cave here. While you were busy driving a wedge between us with your bidding war, Dark Cave's test subject found two money verses. And we're going to split them. So there's no reason to offload our testing to alternate Earths anymore. Funding test chamber construction is no longer a problem. You know what else isn't a problem? Gold teeth. Greg, look at these choppers. <laughs> now, show me yours. Man, you've got tiny teeth, Greg. Ugh. Anyway, the good news is we're ready to start phase two, figuring out a way to bring you back. Greg's going to sink his weird little teeth into that problem too sweet. So, next time you enter a test chamber, you'll be back here on Terra Firma Prima. Hey, Greg, it worked! Welcome back, test subject. Now get back to work. Just because we own a universe made of money doesn't mean I'm made of money. Cave Johnson, we're done here.